Would you welcome Donald O'Hanlon, the advocate for Sean Hollywood? Are we ready to press the button, sir? Shall we count you down? Say when you're ready. I'm ready. He's ready. Three, two, one. Newry has never been a town short on eccentrics, and my nominee for Newry's greatest person certainly comes from amongst their ranks. Sean Hollywood was born on the 12th of December 1943, until his tragic early death 54 years later. He crammed in more achievements than most of us would accomplish in seven, several Doctor Who-like incarnations. We will see over the next 11 and a half minutes how he contributed to Newry's social and economic enrichment and how he brought great honour to our town. Sean's early years were spent in the family home in St Coleman's Park, from where he trundled daily the hundred yards backwards and forwards to the Abbey Grammar School. He was an excellent student and soon found himself studying English at Queen's University, Belfast. He was one of that significant generation who were to be elevated into the professions and would promote equality and respect for those whose ranks they emanated from. Returning to Newry, he started teaching in St. Coleman's College and getting involved in the other three areas which were to mark him as exceptional, politics, sport and drama. His state of philosophy was, the current education system is designed to bring forth a great product. I try to produce people with colour. His depth of knowledge, enthusiasm and unique classroom management ensured success for all but the most recalcitrant student. He talked to us through the most elevated lexicon, sending us all rushing to the dictionaries to find out what the words meant, and we delighted in throwing them back at him the next day. He championed the misfits as well as the exceptional, and had a special place for those non-conformists, many of whom might otherwise have fallen foul of a conservative bureaucracy. Like the line from the Pogue song, he soothed the souls of psychos. <laughs> My contention is that this contribution to education alone makes Sean Hollywood Newry's greatest, as he was a linchpin in shaping the youth of the area into the society we now enjoy and the people we now are. We are socially a better town for his 31 years of influence in education, and many students who were inspired and elevated by him are now the cornerstones of our local economy. His first venture in politics was helping in Paddy O'Hanlon's successful election campaign. And Sean's most significant political moment occurred in early 1972. He was at Bloody Sunday. Now, that day was to be one of a series of marches, with Newry scheduled for the following Sunday. After the slaughter, he resisted pressure to call the march off. He was confident in the arrangements regarding control. And on the day, 50,000 marched in defiance of the government ban, and it passed off without a stone being thrown, showing that the province was ungovernable without the consent of the people. He said, Newry will march. We are going to march unarmed into the teeth of Faulkner's guns. He is going to have to shoot us all to enforce his ban on parades. We intend to answer the greatest display of butchery the state has ever seen with the greatest display of protest the state has ever seen. He forecast that the Derry shootings on Newry March would bring the downfall of the government. And Stormont fell 50 days later on the 28th of March 1972. That act ensured that a Westminster government would begin a more equitable distribution of investment and was the beginning of the end of Newry as an economic black hole. He reached the world stage in that occasion and the determination shown and the brilliant use of tactics demonstrated that he was a cut above the ordinary man. And just how far did his fame travel? My wife, Kate, was teaching in a bush school in the furthest flung province of Nigeria. Turning on a radio at the end of that January, she heard the voice of Sean Hollywood thousands of miles away giving his witness to the events of both Sundays. Two of his most nail-biting moments came in 1974 when he stood in two Westminster elections, in February against Captain Orr and then against Enoch Powell in October. He very nearly made it the second time when he reduced his opponent's majority from over 20,000 to just 3,000. And who knows how his life and ours would have been changed by that. From an entirely selfish perspective, we had them all to ourselves after that. As for all his talent and ability, 
Sean chose to stay at home and work for his community in Uri. He became an SDLP councillor in 1973 and stayed in that position until 1977 and was the local party security spokesman. He defied the party ruling on boycotts of meetings with the police and army, always believing that you should talk directly to people if you want to change things. His stance resulted in his high street home coming under gunfire in September 1975. Those responsible, the IFF, said these shots are a warning to him for his collaborationist activities. His reply, I will continue to oppose the men of violence and will not cease to speak out strongly against the thugs who would limit freedom of speech in this way. Never one to be stuck in the herd, he turned to the ranks of the Alliance Party for a while before leaving politics behind him. The legacy of those days is still being played out as dull heads clash in Stormont. But Sean's position as Newry's greatest is in his role in moving the people of Newry towards social equality and economic betterment. And this brings me to the end of the first part of my presentation. Where? I certainly hope the second part's better than the first. I was bored to death. <laughs> you know, the only excitement I got was Raymond Tordy making eyes at me during the interval. <laughs> Here, what, what did you think? I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Do you know, do you know what I was just thinking, Mac? Like? Isn't it great to see the wee nuns here? Ah, I love God them. love them, man. You know, you know, when I was a wee girl, the nuns was in and the hens was out. Oh? <laughs> and, and now the hens is in and the nuns is out. <laughs> you know what he needs? He needs a wee comedian. A wee comedian in every week doing a wee spot on the show. That's what he really needs. She couldn't get a comedian. Sure, he wouldn't pay. Yeah, sure. Pay all, pay all the comedians in Newry. Really? They're not working for the council and getting the £800 a month overtime. Oh! <laughs> and so from politics, which you can see he never totally left behind him, to acting. Many of the old ones still remember the New Point production of Philadelphia, Here I Come, when Sean and his cousin, the late Jared Murphy, played Gar Public and Gar Private, and many will tell you that nothing they have seen on stage since has surpassed it. In Yuri mythology, in New Point mythology, we think of time before Hollywood and after Hollywood. No one has any idea how many plays were produced under his command, but they averaged four full productions a year for New Point, plus his school productions and soirees in the Shamrocks. One indication of his early success was the production of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in 1981, which he directed and, inevitably, took the leading role of McMurphy. At the Ulster Finals that year, he took the awards for Best Actor and Best Producers. These allocades became a regular feature culminating in his greatest triumph when he won the All-Ireland Prize and performed in the Abbey Theatre for a week. The plays he chose were often challenging and controversial, none more so than this one. Persecution and assassination of Mara as performed by the inmates of the asylum at Charenton, directed by the Marquis de Sade. I did feel that if we got the play right, it was going to be something that was going to be a success at the festivals. And people have enjoyed it. I mean, nobody has gone out and said, I like the play. But they've gone out and said that they had an interesting, riveting experience in the theatre, which is what we set out to achieve. Backstage again, and director Sean Hollywood gives his actors a team talk. Night, it's the best show because of the concentration, the feeling, the emotion, and the impact annoying the audience. I'll be watching every day. Okay, let's go. So, there's the secret of acting success. Get out there and annoy the audience. <laughs> the signature project for New Point was the formation of a youth group. Until then, the youngsters were unlikely to get drama in school. It is now statutory. Sean Hollywood, from 1980 until his death in 1998, spent every summer in the Arts Centre with anything from 20 to 80 young people producing a high-quality show of the type which always provoked and challenged those involved. There was always a great variety of play, so that their CVs would show just how versatile were the Newry Young when it came to applying to and auditioning for drama schools. The sense of fun from those sessions is obvious in one quote relating to Tom Gorman, now lecturing in drama in Manchester. Gorman, you're playing Parnell, the most charismatic Irish politician ever. You're playing him with all the dynamism of James Molyneux on a wet afternoon. <laughs> the summer school lasted for six weeks, five hours a day, five days a week. 
Sean never received a penny for this. The thought would have appalled him. And no youngster was ever asked for, asked for a penny in order to participate. He always said that if John Lynch had had to pay 50p a week to be a new point, he might never have become an actor. These are principles which we covet and still apply in New Point in his honour 34 years after he started his vision. Now this stemmed from a sense of social justice and desire to bring culture to people. He did so much to remove the fur coat from drama in Uri and give opportunities to people to express themselves in ways they hadn't considered. Sean's protégés now fill halls, screens and control rooms in many parts of the world. Again, we see the social and economic consequences of the passions which drove him to make him a worthy recipient of this accolade. Is it not significant that we sit in this hall adjacent to the art centre renamed in his honour, a facility which was the first purpose-built art centre in Ireland and owes its existence to him and similar visionaries so rarely found now. It employs people and brings both local and professional companies to the town. In happier economic times, perhaps our masters will remember his spirit and further develop his dream by expanding our cultural resources to the standard this community deserves. An example of the vision, persistence and dedication exemplified by Sean is in this tenaciousness in getting things done and the very high standards he set himself and others as seen here. I, I'm one of the younger members of the committee, really. I think probably if there's one section which has not improved as much as the rest, it is in the, the vocal aspect of, of theatre. I think it remains not as good as it should be. I think that the very best of the amateur shows are as good as anything that you will see on the professional stage in Ireland. The play Darkness at Noon was withdrawn by Sidney uh, Kingsley and Arthur Kessler about 30 years ago and has not been performed since. I read it 20 years ago and liked it then and for the past seven years I have been writing to French's and Sidney Kingsley and getting people into French's in New York looking for permission and we have finally received permission this year to give the world amateur premiere of this great play. He was an accomplished hurler and footballer and to complicate our Northern Ireland metaphors he kicked with both feet. He became player manager for Down, Armagh and Ulster hurling teams while at the same time ignoring the GAA, GAA ban on soccer by playing under the exotic nom de plume of Wesley Howard. He also played for his beloved Shamrocks. At training he would often look at the scant early pickings and say the tubes always arrive first. His noble attitudes in politics and superb mastery of that parade when the world was watching us, his years of bringing plays and the reputation of Newry around the festivals of Ireland year after year, his sporting achievements and his gift for producing students forced in his own particular pedagogy bring honour to our town. He should have been here in his 70th year doing it still and the Irish news summed him up best as like a benign Midas in everyone he touched something turned to gold. I tender Sean Hollywood to your wisdom. Well done.